Hi guys, welcome to the third episode of our RX Swift series for beginners. In the previous episode, we played with custom cells and the RX extensions for selecting a table view row, model selected and item selected. We'll continue our journey to make all the view controllers in our food app reactive. So let's open Food Detail View Controller and take a look at its current implementation. It's not reactive at all. In order to achieve this in a reactive way, we'll use a behavior relay and a map operator. Wait, what? What's a behavior relay? In order to understand what a behavior relay is, let's first talk about subjects. A subject acts both as an observable and an observer, so it can emit and receive elements. There are four subject types in RxSwift. Publish subject, behavior subject, replace subject, and async subject. In order to use them correctly, we need to understand first the differences between them. The publish subject only emits new elements to subscribers. The behavior subject emits the last element to new subscribers. The replay subject emits a buffer size of elements to new subscribers. And the async subject emits only the last next event in the sequence and only when the subject receives a completed event. Let's see them in action. For this, I created for us a playground and imported it into our project. Here it is. Let's start by defining a publish subject. And the compiler is helping us as usual. Our subject will emit elements of type string. It's an empty subject right now, but we'll add next events into it with the aid of the unnext method. And we need an observer to subscribe to it. And we'll just implement the subscribe method as we've seen in the previous episodes. And in the unnext closure, we will just print the element to the console. And now, if we run our playground, well, nothing happens. Why? Because the observer subscribed after we added the first element into our published subject. So now, if we just add another element, our observer should receive it and print it out. Which we can see here, it happens. The behavior subject instead should emit the last element to the new subscribers. So let's see how that works if we go ahead and define a behavior subject here. The same with string elements. We see that we need to initialize it with a value. Because behavior subject always emits its latest element, you can't create one without providing an initial value. So let's just subscribe. 
The same, we are interested in the on next closure. And just the same, we want to print in the console. And here it is, the first element is received. Great! How about the replace object? Let's go ahead and define one. Right, let's say it emits elements of type int. We have to define a buffer size for it, let's say 2. And now let's put 3 elements inside it. Let's define also an observer that subscribes to it. I am lazy and I'm copy pasting the above. Let's run and see that we just receive number two and number three. Now, if I modify the buffer size to three, I will get all the three elements. Cool. Let's see also the async subject. Right, it will emit also string elements and we don't have to initialize it with anything. Let's add into it two next events. Then let's define an observer that subscribes to it. And I know, again, I am lazy and use the copy paste. Good, observer number four. Let's see what's printed. Well, nothing. Why? Because the async subject didn't emit a completed event. Let's add it and see what happens. Now we receive the last next event emitted in the console. Great! Let's move forward. RxSwift also provides a concept called relays, which are subjects that never complete. So they only emit next events. There are two types of relays, publish relay that wraps around publish subject and behavior relay that wraps around behavior subject. It is guaranteed that they never emit a completed or error event, which makes them great for the UI related work. Let's play a bit with them also. So back to our playground and let's define a publish relay. It will emit also string elements and we don't have to initialize it with any value like we saw in the publish subject example. This time to add the next event, we don't use the onNext method anymore, but a special one used by all relays called accept. Again, we need also an observer, so I will copy paste the above. Guess what? If we run, nothing happens because the observer subscribed after the accept method. But then, the same as in the case of our published subject, if we emit another element after we have a subscription, it will get printed 
to the console. Let's see also the behavior relay. You guessed it, it will behave pretty similar to the behavior subject. But let's go ahead and see it in action, especially because we will use it also in our food app. It requires a value like the behavior subject. Let's put something in there. You know, we need also an observer that subscribes to it. Right. Hit play and we can already see the value printed in the console. We can add another element with the aid of the accept method. Hit the play again and the new element is printed also to the console. Cool! Now that we know what a behavior relay is and how to work with it, we are ready to use it into our food app. But this we will see in our next episode and until then I encourage you to take this as homework and try it on your own at first. To conclude, Let's wrap up what we did in this episode. We use the playground inside our project in order to explore the subjects and relays offered by RxSwift and RxCoco. We saw the differences between the published subject, the behavior subject, the relay subject and the async subject. And we learned that publish relays and behavior relays never emit a completed or error event, which makes them great for the UI related work. Thank you very much for watching and do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it already in order not to miss the next episodes. See you later. Cheers.